Well, here we are in Ezekiel chapter 2 today, a short chapter, only 10 verses, but significant because it's Ezekiel's call and commission, which I've uh, labeled this uh, chapter, called and commissioned. It's uh, divided into a couple sections here, verses 1 through 8. I labeled that his call, verses 9 through 10, his message. We can call it his commission. So let's take a look at this. In verses 1 and 2, he's empowered and enabled for ministry by the giving of the Spirit of God. I think this is the same Spirit that we saw in chapter 1, who's directing the four creatures that are associated with judgment and the coming kingdom. So we see here that same Spirit not only animating those four living creatures, but also animating Ezekiel as well, guiding him and directing him. We see this continuity from the throne uh, through the Spirit to the four living creatures and then through the Spirit to Ezekiel, all of them doing God's will, uh, giving God's message, talking about uh, the judgment in the coming kingdom. That is the revelation that's been entrusted to Ezekiel. Verses 3 through 5, uh, again, you start getting some of the um, personal background here, what Ezekiel is going to be personally up against. It's not going to be an easy ministry. Let's take a look at these. Son of man, I am sending you to the sons of Israel, to a rebellious people who have rebelled against me. They and their fathers have transgressed against me to this very day. I am sending you to them who are stubborn and obstinate children, and you shall say to them, Thus says the Lord God. As for them, whether they listen or not, for they are a rebellious house, they will know that a prophet has been among them. So again, this is not going to be an easy ministry for Ezekiel. We've seen this in Isaiah. We've seen this in Jeremiah. Now we see this in Ezekiel. This is tough. Uh, speaking God's word, even to God's people, is tough. Ezekiel's told her that the message is mostly going to fall on deaf ears. Yet his faithfulness, in the face of this adversity, his willingness and his determination to continue to speak clearly God's word, is going to demonstrate that he is a true prophet of God. Perseverance does that. Uh, faithfulness to the word of God demonstrates that the man of God is faithful to God. Verses 6 to 8, God warns Ezekiel, don't be intimidated by them. There he's not to fear man, but he's to fear God and to speak his words. Again, just to reflect on that for a moment, uh, we're still reading Ezekiel now because of his faithfulness. Here we are, um, I'm estimating in my head, about 2,500 years uh, after the book was written. Uh, we are still reading it because of his, he was faithful. Those who resisted him, those who fought against him are gone. But the word stands, and we're listening to it today. Verses 9 to 10 talk about the message of Ezekiel. It's unusual to find a scroll that was written on both sides. It seems to indicate the fullness of the revelation that Ezekiel was given. He's going to be told not only uh, the exile and the reasons for it and the coming destruction of Jerusalem, but also the end times restoration. So it seems like he has a, a full revelation. Uh, Ryrie comments that it's written on both sides uh, because God has a lot to say through Ezekiel. So the message, the nature of it, is really one of judgment and restoration. So how do we apply this to the church today? Well, let's first reflect on the fact that God summoned Ezekiel and he sent him to a hard-hearted, stiff-necked, unresponsive people. Not because that people were, those people were worthy, uh, but because he is faithful. That God is going to be faithful to even disobedient people. And the only charge that God gives to the prophet is to faithfully declare God's word. 
And that's what every Bible teacher today in the church, that is what every pastor in the pulpit is called to do, is faithfully declare God's word. Every congregation is called to faithfully hear it and to live by it and declare it. That's what we're called to do. And that was what Ezekiel was called to do. Jesus has come into the world and the world resists him. The world resists his word. But our task is nevertheless to share the good news that God is faithful. He loves the world so much that he sent Christ to bear the sin of the world. All the church has to do, all that you and I have to do, all that anyone has to do, is believe. Believe that Jesus is the perfect atoning sacrifice. The response that we get for sharing the gospel may be hard-hearted, may be a stiff-necked response, but that's not our concern. Our task is to not only faithfully declare the good news of the gospel, but to disciple faithfully those who respond. So be strong, brothers and sisters. Be focused on your task. Don't worry about the response. Just be faithful to do what God has called you to do. God bless you, brothers and sisters. Hope you're finding the book of Ezekiel uh, uh, exciting, interesting. I think it's a great start we're off to. And I'm looking really forward to the rest of the book as we go through it in the coming weeks. God bless you.